So what if I told you guys that you could cut your development time in half and bring back some of the fun in mobile development? My name is Quirain Kroblumink. Some people call me Quirgen or Kirgen or something funny, but most people know me as Q. And I'm a software engineer over at the Iconic, and I normally work on the Android app, but I sometimes like to dabble in things that Google does. Which brings me to the topic of today, which is Flutter. Who of you guys have heard of Flutter? A bunch of you. How many of you have played with it? Who's something in production? <laughs> it's worth the question. Anyway, so I'll be covering these uh, topics real fast today, and maybe I'll convince you to play around with it. So to start off with, what is Flutter? So Flutter really helps you to build nice, high-performing, beautiful apps in a cross-platform manner for both Android and iOS. It's completely open source. You can go to GitHub and check out the code. And it's currently maintained by Google. One of the main thoughts behind uh, Flutter is the widgets. And it's not widgets like Android widgets, but everything that Flutter is is a widget. And think of things like the text. That's a widget. And it'll just display some random text. But then your designer comes along, and he's like, mm, I can't really read that. It's pretty small. I don't know. So he's like, maybe you should increase the size a bit and make it bold. So you're like, OK, sure. So you use another widget called the textile widget. And you give it through to the constructor of the text. But our designer is never really that happy. So he's like, maybe you should center it. So you center it. So you wrap the whole thing in a center widget. And this looks OK for the designer, but I'm a bit like, yeah, that's better. Anyway, so what I just did was actually create another widget. And it's called my welcome widget, because, well, it welcomes you guys. And this is what a widget looks like. In this case, it's a stateless widget. One of the things uh, is really focused on, on Flutter is that composition comes over inheritance. So you compose your widgets of other smaller widgets. So there's two types of widgets. You've got the stateless widget, one that I just showed you, and a stateful widget. And the difference is one has state. The stateful widget, which extends from the stateful widget, only creates a state. Pretty simple. The state itself defines what it's going to be built, and some of the, well, you can't see the pointer, the, the state of the thing. In this case, it's a counter. So what I did, I changed a little bit. It's basically the same. I added the inkwell, which makes it clickable, and gives you this on tap method. So now when the user presses on the text, they'll call the set state and increment the counter. What set state does, it'll just make it redraw the whole thing. So if I click on the Sydney thing, it'll just increment the number behind it. And I'll show you that later. One of the things Flutter really looked at when they were de developing the, the SDK was at the apps that were already out there. There was a lot of apps out there, and the best apps always use custom UIs. So they really wanted to like provide for that. And I'll tell you how they did that. This is the overall architecture of Flutter. So at the very bottom, you have the engine, which is all written in C++. And it has some components. Skia, which is uh, the 2D rendering engine that's also used by, by Android. In the middle, you have Dart. Dart is the language that you'll be using to develop any of your Flutter apps. And at the very end, you have text. And the fun fact is that most of the Flutter team actually comes from the Chrome team. So they ported their text rendering engine over to Flutter. On top of this engine, they built the framework, which is all written in Dart. And you can touch anything you want within the framework, which is pretty cool. It gives you a lot of flexibility. So it starts off with the Dart UI. And the Dart UI will give you the most basic things, like the canvas and some gesture recognition, for example. On top of that, they built the rendering layer. And as I mentioned earlier, you can completely build your own rendering, and rendering layer if you wanted to. It's a lot of work. Some people have done it. And this just provides for your layouting on top of in on the UI, your padding, and your margin, that kind of thing. On top of that, they build widgets. And think of the text widget that I showed you, but then image widgets or buttons and things like that. On top of that, again, they built two UI libraries. One is Material, which are widgets that um, adhere to the Material design spec. And the Cupertino ones, you might have guessed, are iOS kind of styled. So all this freedom allows you to build very custom UIs, which brings back the whole custom UI part. Next part is tooling. And the tooling for Flutter 
is pretty good. And it starts off with the IDE. So it's, for us Android developers anyway, IntelliJ is pretty common. It's a really nice tool. Some people have been using uh, Visual Code, and I'm pretty sure there's people out there that use Vim. You can do that as well. This is what your project kind of looks like. So it has four main folders. Your Android folder, which will just be the normal Android project you're used to. The iOS folder would be a normal iOS project. And then you have the lib folder, which is where all your Dart code lives. Next to that, you have the test folder for all your tests. And there's a file at the very bottom, which is quite important, which is the pub spec for the ammo. And the pub spec is kind of similar to the package JSON file you have in Node.js. It just has some metadata about the application and it defines your dependencies. Talking about dependencies, you have these CLI tools, which allow you to update the dependencies and as well as your Flutter installation itself. And one of the first uh, commands you'll be running when you start a project or start with Flutter at all is Flutter Doctor. And it's really nice and helpful, especially to get you started because you don't know what you're doing. So check your environment for all the things you need to start with Flutter development. So it'll tell you what version you have of Flutter already and all the tools you need in your Android tool chain and in your iOS tool chain. So for example, if you don't have Cocoa Pods installed and you run Flutter Doctor, it'll complain right there. It's like, oh, mm, you might need to brew install these Cocoa Pods just so you can start iOS development. And it'll tell you things like what uh, devices are connected and your emulators. One of the cool things about Flutter is HUD reload, which is something that we thought we had in Android, but we didn't really with instant run. Oh, I guess that didn't work. So what hot reload does is basically what we hoped instant run would do. This is the stateful widget that I built earlier. And I'm just gonna change the text and save. And it's gonna do this hot reload and I'll just update on the screen right for you. But it's not just text, you can even change logic. So if I change the counter to decrement instead of increment, when I go ahead and click it, it'll just decrement instead of incrementing, which is kind of nice. So what it does, it injects the modified code into the Dart VM. When you're just developing a normal app and debugging it, it'll actually run a Dart VM on your device and it inject the Dart code straight into there. So it'll just inject the modified code. And it does so statefully. So as you noticed, once I hot reload and change something, the value was still four, so which is crazy. And it'll increase your development time quite a lot. Think when you're changing the UI in some deep random setting space that you never come. You just have to change it and it'll update right there. You don't have to navigate the whole tree again. Another cool thing is it'll do through crash, it'll even do it through crashes. So your widgets, if they fail, they'll fail just within that widget and it'll show you that error. And you can go ahead, change it, and it'll fix it. So for testing, it has all the things you want it to have. So it'll have unit testing just for your normal business logic and widget testing to make sure that your widgets do what they're supposed to do and look and act as they're supposed to do. And then you have the full-fledged integration test. For performance, I don't know what you guys are thinking. It's like, hmm, cross-platform, mm, probably not really good. But actually, Flutter is really fast. I'm gonna tell you how. So first of all, there's no reliance on OEM widgets. And what this means is that there's no bridge in between. So if you compare it to, for example, React Native, where you have this bridge in the middle, which translates the context from the whole JavaScript to the more native side, that's kind of a bottleneck. And in Flutter, because we do, they do the rendering all within the framework, you don't have to have that bridge anymore. It'll just compile straight to the canvas, straight to native code and right to the canvas. So it compiles straight to ARM code. And it has this neat trick with structural relayouting and re, repainting. So one of the things to note about widgets is that they're completely immutable. So when they're traversing the tree to detect what's changed, at some point they'll stumble upon a widget that hasn't changed and they'll stop right there and then just repaint what they've already traversed. Another important fact is Dart, because they, Dart, they chose Dart for one reason, well, multiple reasons, but one I'm gonna mention, and that's uh, how it handles memory allocations. It needs something efficient to handle its small and short-term memory allocations, and Dart's garbage collector is pretty good at that. So can I use it now? Well, yes, ish, kind of. So it's, it is in alpha, technically, so they can still make breaking API changes. And it has some features that are missing, and one that's not noticeable is, for example, accessibility. So if that's important to you, well, too bad. Inline maps or video even, so there's no 3D OpenGLS kind of stuff. 
available yet. So if your app needs that, not yet. And also some limitations with Android API. So it's Android API 16 and higher, and it'll only run on ARM devices as well in release mode. So if you try to run, uh, install a Flutter app on your emulator, then it's not gonna work. It'll complain that it doesn't have the correct instruction set. And then there's iOS 8 plus and 64 devices. But please just go ahead and try it, get some feedback, share it with the community, and it'll all get better. So there are some production apps out there. And the most noticeable one is Hamilton. You might have heard of it. It's pretty big musical over in the States and in London, I guess. And the, this app's completely built in Flutter. It's one of the ma first main apps. And they worked really close with the Flutter team to make sure that Flutter works as they'd expect it to. So they had a lot of feedback from this. They have a lot of animations and it looks amazing in general. So some key takeaways. There's a single code base for both Android and iOS. And it, they make it very easy for you to make high performance apps. So it'll make it very easy to make 60 frames per second apps. The tooling is really good. And the documentation is really amazing. If you go over to flutter.io, the website, you'll see that they have plenty of examples and a lot of documentation. The community is quite active as well. For example, the Gitter channel, it's super active. And you should go ahead there and ask some questions, even if you're a total beginner. There's some resources. So obviously, flutter.io, uh, the Gitter page, and this blog post is actually really nice, and it talks about most of the things that I did as well. So thank you. That was my talk, actually.